Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician. And today, I'm going to show you how to draw the Lewis dot structure for the tetrafluoroborate ion. In previous videos, I showed how to draw the Lewis structures for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, the carbonate ion, and boron trifluoride. If you haven't watched those videos yet, then I encourage you to do that first. As always, we need to begin by counting the number of valence electrons in the constituent atoms. We know that boron has three valence electrons, fluorine has seven valence electrons, and there's an extra electron from the charge of minus one. In total, we have 32 valence electrons. Now, we need to determine the spatial arrangement of the atoms in two dimensions for the tetrafluoroborate ion. As always, I encourage you to think about the electronegativities. Fluorine is more electronegative than boron, so it makes sense then to put the more electronegative atoms in the periphery and the less electronegative atom in the center. Now we can start adding the electrons to this Lewis structure. As usual, I encourage you to start by filling in the bonds, and I encourage you to assume that the bonds are single bonds. This isn't always true, but it's a good assumption to begin with. That takes away eight electrons, so we have 24 left. At this point, I encourage you to distribute them to the more electronegative atoms in the periphery. This is not always true, but it's a good idea to begin with this assumption. So we've distributed all 32 electrons, but we need to show the charge of minus one to this Lewis structure because this is a polyatomic ion. So that seems like a pretty straightforward example. Why did I bring it up? Well, this is actually a follow-up to my earlier video on the Lewis structure of boron trifluoride. Recall that in that example, there isn't a stable octet around the boron. That boron had only six electrons around it. So it was an incomplete octet. In that case, the boron trifluoride molecule exists. But the boron is actually even more stable with eight electrons around it, forming a stable octet. So given the opportunity, boron trifluoride will add another fluorine to it to form the tetrafluoroborate ion. So this is actually more stable than boron trifluoride. So the main message to take away from this comparison is that the incomplete octet does not always apply to boron. And we have to examine how boron behaves on a molecule by molecule basis. So the incomplete octet applies to boron in boron trifluoride but the stable octet applies to boron in the tetrafluoroborate ion. Okay, all right, so 
If you'd like to learn more about statistics, chemistry, mach machine learning, or math, then please visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician. You can also find me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Visit my YouTube channel to learn more about statistics or chemistry from my video tutorials. And you can also find my new talk show, The Central Equilibrium, on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.